Hi, I'm Nerida Conway. Welcome to ChefMasterclasses.com. Now, I'm having a chat today in the kitchen with Ian Curley, who's the executive chef at the European in Melbourne. One of my absolute favourite haunts ever. Sadly enough, I'm there too often. No, it's good. It's good to see you all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Politically correct chef as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Ian, how did you get into cooking in the first place? Uh, where I came from in Coventry, there were no particular jobs of doing anything else. It used to be a very industrial town, mm -hmm. so we... I'm thinking brassed off. Uh, yeah. Uh, in Coventry, we used to make cars, a lot of cars, and the it was, essentially the industry was getting privatised in Thatcher's government. That shows how old I was. So if you wanted to work, you had to find an alternative growth industry. And a friend of mine said, if you want to travel the world and work, essentially you can go and cook. Okay. And that's what I did. And how old were you when that happened? Uh, I think I cooked my first dish when I was 18. Okay. And uh, so... What was yeah. your boss like at the time? Uh, he was... No, in fact, you know what? They were actually really good. I mean, I think what is it, it's important with staff is to actually lead them a certain way down the road before you uh, you sort of like tell them what you really think of them. So I think you kind of lure them in first, and then, and then uh, on your it, best behaviour. Yeah, that's right. A bit then, like dating. Um, yeah, <laughs> Let's I, suck them in, and then yeah, I can't remember. It's been a while, but um, it's uh, it was it. English kitchens were notoriously aggressive kitchens, but I, I was lucky. It's uh, I've always been a big boy, so I've always been able to look after myself. Okay. Um, and then how did you make your way out to Australia? Um, I was working at the Hyatt in, uh, in London and they, the Grand Hyatt here in um, Melbourne was opening so they asked me if I wanted to come over and run Max's Kitchen. Back in the day it was a fine dining restaurant. So by the time I got here they um, said that the Max's position would, had been taken so if I wanted to stay around and do a uh, the plane tree, which was about 800 buffet on a Sunday, oh, and gosh. probably wasn't the way I wanted to go, so <laughs> no. I decided not to stay there for very long. Okay, and so what did you do? Uh, I've worked in a number of Melbourne restaurants, and uh, I've been over to Perth, and uh, but for, I mean, I tend not to change jobs too often. It's um, I like to stay in one place for a while. I mean, I was at the point for nine years. I've been at the European for the last six, mm. and uh, you know, I'm pretty stable um, in jobs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're married to a beautiful Australian girl. Uh, in fact, we're not actually married. So, uh, oh, that's right. Probably, Sorry, uh, you're engaged. No, that's right. We're engaged. I probably, probably might want to rewind that bit. <laughs> um, yeah, we were, we're engaged. Um, so when's the wedding? Um, I don't know yet. Um, sure. Well, it took me 10 years to actually pluck up the courage to ask her, so it might take me 10 years to book the date as well. I oh, know, two beautiful girls, amazing. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And yeah. how old are they? Uh, four and two. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, and what's the best thing about being a dad for you? Uh, I think the thing about being a dad is it's just, we just know that your priorities shift from being a selfish chef who thinks all about himself and his ego, as the ego goes when kids come in, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> once you get kids, you're, They're grounding, all your, aren't they? You're, all your energy goes towards the children. So, and that's the thing. I've, I, for me personally, it's been the, the best thing ever because I admit I was a, a very boisterous and aggressive cook. I've, I've always run kitchens like there have been army camps. And as I always say, you can't really give anybody a severe telling off or a bollocking if you've been watching the Wiggles all morning. <laughs> So, it's, it's so uh, true. Yeah, and it puts it all in perspective that, you know, over poaching an egg, you know. Okay, What's really well, important. Well, well, that's right. Let's We'll let this one ride. Yeah. And you know what? I think, uh, personally, I'm, I'm happier now mm. than I've ever been. And the fact that I've got those two, or no, those three, including the missus, that uh, she hates me calling her the missus. But Fair enough. Cause the fact know. that I've got those three... I'm very lucky. Yeah, they're beautiful. Um, and so, what's a day in your life like at the moment? Because you've got so many different things on the board. You know, you've got the European, you've got your consulting, mm. your TV gigs. Um, what, what's it like? If you're at work, you're looking after your staff and making sure the business runs. And we're, I'm incredibly lucky that we're one of the busiest restaurants in Melbourne. I think... And um, are you shut for like, two, is it two hours, two hours a, day. a day that you yeah. shut? Yeah. It's exhausting. It's, um, so, I mean, I've been there like five, five, six years. It's taken me a long time to get it to close to how I want it. It's not, still not there yet, but it will get there. Um, you just have to take, you have to diversify. There's no point 
Cooks nowadays have to be better than just being cooks. They have to be able to talk to a camera, they have to go out and promote their business. Mm. They also have to be able to endorse different products. I mean, I think the, the concept of a, of a restaurant open from 12 till 3 and then open from 6 till 9, mm. it's, a, it's a flawed concept because, you know, in years to come, there'll be places that have to do take-home meals that would never have done it 10 years ago. And a restaurant, because you're paying high wages and higher percentages now, you have to diversify and get out there and say, yes, we're good at food and wine, but also, yeah, we do outside catering or you mm. know, some of the other successful restaurateurs go out there and that's how they adapt to the industry. Now, you've just um, got a hat at the oh, uh, yeah. Good Food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how does that all work out? It's great to have it. Uh, I didn't lose sleep when they took it away a couple of years ago when they said that we were too busy. Um, oh, is that know. lie? Yeah, apparently. But, right. you know, the, the, I'm, I'm not denigrating. It's, it's a fantastic achievement and it's great for the staff. Mm. But in the, ter in the term, I would much rather be busy and us paying our bills mm. oh, than yeah. us being quiet and owing people money but with a hat. So. I've got to be careful how I say it because I don't want to upset too many people as I normally do. <laughs> but we're very proud to have the hats. Um, if we lost it again next year, you know, as long as we're paying our bills and everybody's mm. happy and healthy and safe, mm. then we're happy. How did life change for you being suddenly in a kitchen and doing your thing to being thrust onto national television and being sort of the star of a show and having it rate so well? Yeah. Um, well, at the beginning, I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but I was lucky enough to to work in a kitchen, which is which is my domain, and they wanted a grumpy chef who uh, who bossed people around all day, which is what, what I do, which I get paid for in my uh, in my day job. So I was lucky. Like, I mean, thank goodness I wasn't doing any dancing shows. But you know, <laughs> that's next. I'm told. Uh, no, I'm not doing it. But um, but I um. I sat down, I thought about it, and I spoke to the people that I love, and they said, you should do it, and also it will raise profile for the restaurants, so it was good. And, and Did you have fun doing it? Uh, after the first week, yes. Um, it was hard being away from the family and mm. uh, being away for three months at a time, but you get profile from it, which, you know... It, it, it's, good and it, bad? It is good and it is bad and also, and but it's it's good for if you want to endorse things, but also for the profile of the restaurant. But also, you know, you can have an opinion. I mean, I do a lot of charity work now, and um, it gets me access to people that I would never have even spoken to me before. Do you think it's yeah. important these days, for, especially for younger chefs that are up and coming, for them to have a little bit of media experience? I think it's important to know that there's more involved to cooking than just being the best chef in the world. Mm. Like, you can hold up a piece of fruit or, you know, a piece of meat. You're not going to be the first person to ever create mm. a dish. It's mm. how you sell it to the people that come into your restaurant, how you can actually turn and leverage your career. That's right. And also, mm. you can get a dish that... I know restaurants that are not making any money at all mm. and they bought themselves a job. Now, I think it's up to the chef to actually go out there and help sell that restaurant to your your customers and your mm. clientele. A lot of people don't get to work in the job that they, they would ideally love to work mm. in. I, I, I think I do. Okay. And I know you work with food all day and you're used to tasting so many different things, but what are your, just off the top of your head, your three favourite things to eat? Oysters, buffalo mozzarella, and I think I like to drink champagne. Oh my God, they are literally my three as well. Well, there you go. <laughs> We could have an amazing dinner party. Couldn't we? <laughs> Thank you so much. No, no, Love so chatting much. to you. Thank you very much.